thinking about getting involved in a regional plan, good on you. It can seem a little bit daunting at the start, but don't worry, we're here to help you every step of the way. This video pulls together some tips and tricks to help you get started. If you want some more support, make sure you come along to one of our beef and lamb workshops or get in touch with one of our environment team members. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the RMA process first. When a council is creating or amending a plan, by law they have to follow a prescribed process. As a farmer, the three key steps where you can have the biggest impact are pre-plan consultation, writing a submission and presenting at the hearing. Focus your attention here and leave the other steps up to your industry groups to worry about. Before the plan is notified, the council is still forming its ideas and it wants to collect information back from the community. To do this, it will hold public meetings and this is a great opportunity for you to get involved. Attend these public meetings and share your feedback to help shape up what the council's plan might look like. Once the council notifies a plan, you get the opportunity to write a submission. Now it's really important that you do write a submission because this is your entry ticket into the process. If you don't enter a written submission, you cannot come into the process at a later stage. At this stage, Beef and Lamb will run workshops. Here we'll help you to write your submission and we'll release summary documents to help you hone in on those issues important to the dry stock sector. The next stage is called further submissions and this is where you get the chance to read other people's submissions and then rebut on what they've already said. You can get involved in this stage but we recommend that you'd actually be better off getting ready for the hearing and leaving this step up to your industry group to worry about. So next is the hearing and this is the most important stage. This is where you get to stand up and speak directly to the decision makers and there is nothing more powerful than farmers standing up and telling their story. To help you with this stage Beef and Lamb will run further workshops. Here we'll help you to understand how the council's thinking has changed from the written submission stage and we'll also help you to prepare your evidence for the hearing. At the hearing you'll expand on your submission and provide evidence to back your points up. Your evidence might include things like a farm environment plan, water quality monitoring results or photographs of your farm. Once the decision makers have listened and read all the feedback they will make a decision about what to include in the plan a final plan will be publicly notified. Submitters then get to appeal the decision, should they wish to. Usually the appeals will go straight to the Environment Court and then on to the High Court, except for in Canterbury where they go directly to a High Court and must be on points of law only. Now this can be a really costly and time consuming process, so generally individual farmers don't get involved at the appeal stage. However, in some cases farmers have joined a group and appealed decisions together. All in all, the entire process from when the plan is notified until it becomes final can take up to two years. So so pace yourself through the steps and don't get burned out through the process. While it can all seem a bit daunting, if you break your time and effort down to the three key areas where you can get best bang for buck, pre-planned feedback, writing a submission and presenting at the hearing, then you can make sure you get maximum impact for your effort. Next we'll hear from two people to give you some tips and tricks to help you get started. We've got Andrew Fenimore, a hearing commissioner. Andrew will tell you about the presentations which have had the most power with him and give you some hints on how you can influence the decision makers. We've also got Colin Hurst, a farmer who's successfully been through this process. He'll give you some advice about his experiences. Farmers need to be, be in their boots and all. If you're not engaged or involved in the process, you'll just get given something and you can't, the old adage is, oh, someone else will do it, Federated Farmers will do it, or Beef and Lamb will do it, but you've got to get in there and do your bit. It's absolutely key, you've got to have your say, because if you're not there, you'll get an outcome that might affect the ongoing future viability of your farm. In order to get started on writing a submission, I think you simply have to be organised. Now, um, your sector groups like Beef and Lamb can probably help you to identify the issues that um, should be focused on, uh, but in the end you need to be aware of what is in the proposed plan and what specifically you would like to see changed and address those things. So if you can focus on the particular parts of the proposed plan that are unacceptable to you and explain why, then you'll have done your job in writing the submission. 
I think from the perspective of the hearing panel, um, it needs to be relevant and it needs to be real. So, um, and, and by that I mean that it obviously has to be relevant to the sorts of things you would like changed in the proposed plan, but it really helps if you can bring your submission to life by giving some examples of, of why the changes are necessary, um, what is wrong with the proposed wording, what would be the consequences if it's not changed. So um, try, try and bring it alive, be, be honest, um, bring your personal experience to it, and, um, and I think that will be more convincing for the hearing panel members. Well, I think it's really important that you put the, you identify the key issues that you want to raise, um, preferably framed around what you would expect uh, to be changed in the proposed plan. So you've, you've read the proposed plan, or someone's explained it to you, uh, so your role in the submission is to explain the key points that you want to um, have changed. If you turn up to a hearing and um, start addressing something that wasn't in your submission, then you may find that uh, you're challenged uh, because it's beyond the scope of the, the submission that you initially put in. So be careful about that. Uh, beyond that, it's the, the key points can be put in the submission and then when you turn up at the hearing, you can go into a lot of detail supporting those key points. In your submission or verbal um, hearing statement, if you don't ask for something, there's no chance you might get it. So I think there's a question of scope within submissions, so you need to be very careful that you ask for something in your verbal, uh, verbal submission that, that it reflects what the original submission was about. Otherwise, the hearing panel will just ignore you. The sorts of constraints that are provided in the RMA uh, are around process, a lot of them. So your, your submission needs to be um, related to the matters in the plan. Um, it can't stray into, into matters that are beyond the RMA, for example. Um, your submission needs to be uh, focused on what, needs to, what you would like changed in the plan. And if you get to the point where there are appeals to the Environment Court, then the lawyers are very focused on the relevance of and the impact of the changes that are proposed to be made. Mm. So I think you just need to take advice from your advocates or, um, or legal advisors and make sure you're remaining on script, basically. So I think through your sector groups like Beef and Lamb and through Dairy NZ and um, so on, Hort NZ, um, those sorts of sector groups are particularly effective at marshalling uh, the issues in a more generic sense. So you don't necessarily have to do this on your own. Some of the issues that are in the plan may affect you personally, by yourself, but they would tend to be rare. They tend to be generic types of um, rules and policies that are proposed to be put in place. So I'd encourage you to get involved through your sector group. I think it has more weight if the sector group is advocating for certain issues uh, certain changes in the plan uh, and if a lot of farmer witnesses are turning up and singing from the same song sheet then that gives a far greater weight than an individual submission that might be slightly off beam compared to the sector position. I think it's a reality particularly in complex planning hearings that if you're faced with 2,000 submissions, so you're a hearing panel member, you've got say 2,000 submissions to, um, to go through and um, understand the salient points that are being made. What will remain in the decision makers' minds as they make the decision is primarily the appearances of people at the hearing. Um, it, it simply makes the submission much more real if you can turn up and explain the basis for your submission and be questioned and in, in a conversation with the hearing panel actually explain why you're concerned about it and why you were concerned enough to turn up at the hearing at all. Obviously it shows that you are really committed to having a change made to the proposed plan, so please turn up. I think it is really important that farmers make the effort to make a written submission and need to speak to their submission, even if they just go in and say, I want this, this and this. And it's really important to say you want something and what you like and what you don't like. Well, one of the um, effective methods that I've noticed in these Environment Canterbury hearings recently is that um, where farmers can coordinate themselves as a group and have a consistent message 
They won't all be saying the same thing, but they'll be giving examples from their own experience of how the, the planning provisions will affect them in proposing some change, hopefully. Um, then the consistency of that message helps to deliver better impact. Through the hearing process, one of the key things that I felt was really important from the sheep and beef farmers, they really got their point across and their key theme came through time and time again, that these farmers were low emitting farmers. We're talking really low nitrogen loss numbers and there was no real big risk to the environment. So that was the key theme that kept reoccurring through the hearing process and the hearing panel thankfully picked up on that and changed the plan around. And one of the things, key things with that was the hearing panel put the pressure back on the science from the regional council to say what really are the effects on these types of farms. Be constructive and solutions focused. We want the sector to be telling the same consistent messages but through each person's own unique story. The three key stages to get involved is the pre-planned consultation, writing a submission and presenting at the hearing. Now writing a submission is your entry ticket into the process. You can't present at the hearing without a written submission. But presenting at the hearing is where you can have the most impact because you're speaking directly to the decision makers. Most importantly, we're here to help you. If you're feeling stuck at any stage, just get in touch with someone from the environment team and we will help you navigate your way through the plan.